Bruch Maboyim. Thank you very much for coming. Again, welcome to our home. The um, topic this week is really a question for all of us. How are we doing? I mean, the pandemic's been going on for quite a while. So last week, I gave my thoughts on wearing a kippah. And as I mentioned, we wear the kippah as a sign that we acknowledge that there is a God above us who runs the world. The truth is that with the state of the country, the state of the world, in addition to the pandemic, one would have to be blind not to see the hand of God in all of this. The world is in chaos, as is many of our lives. Nothing in life is an accident. Everything around us seems to be confused, so to speak, in a state of flux. We are all waiting, but what are we waiting for? I think that many of us are waiting for a vaccine. One of the few things that a majority of people really can agree upon. Not that we will agree on which vaccine actually works, or back to the old question <laughs> about believing in vaccines at all. So I'm afraid that even a vaccine is really not the answer. So what is the answer? Man, mankind has always disagreed with each other. You know, without civil laws in order, we go back to the first confrontation in the Bible between two brothers, Cain and Hevel, Cain and Abel. Two brothers, a relationship that one would think would and should bring out the best in both. And many times it does, but other times it actually brings out the worst. But isn't that our quest in life? to try to live in peace and tranquility, a search for utopia on earth. And that's exactly what Yaakov, our father, wanted, as the saying goes, easier said than done. His life was anything but tranquil. But really, to his surprise, the last 17 years of his life that were in Egypt were spent in joy and serenity. He was surrounded by children and grandchildren, Yosef was back. Not only that, he was the viceroy of Egypt. And somehow all is well that ends well. You know, they think of it much like a, a story. A friend of mine who uh, was very much into college football. And there was a championship game. He was a I'm an otter of uh, Michigan State. Michigan State was playing Alabama for the state champ for the for the the national championship, Rose Bowl, and he was very excited, very excited. But as it would be, the game came out on Shabbos on Saturday, and was being played in the afternoon, so he really couldn't watch. But that was no problem. After all, a DVR is great. Record the game. And he made sure, he made sure he told everyone, everyone, again and again and again, if you hear about the game, don't tell me. I want to watch the game. I want to see what's happening. I don't want to know. And understandable. But Murphy's Law. <laughs> He's waiting, watching the clock, looking at the clock for Shabbos to end. He's going to dart out of the shul and go home to watch the game. And sure enough, someone comes in after they finish Meyer, before he can get out the door. And he comes in and he's loud and clear. What a game. What a game. And he starts saying the first half was a, a rout. I mean, it was awful. I wanted to shut my TV off. And then at the second half, you won't believe it. What a game. They just ended the game, a field goal right at the end, and they won. Uh, unbelievable. I wanted to shut it off. Can't believe it. My friend's just shaking his head. Can't believe it. But an interesting thing happened. You see, he went home and turned down his television. And he started watching the game. And he couldn't believe it. Fumbles, interceptions, everything that could go wrong went wrong. The only thing went right is they blocked one extra point. That was it. But it was nothing. They were down 30 nothing at the end of the half. And he's watching it and he's thinking to himself, if he hadn't heard that they're going to win the game, he said, I, I would have shut it off. I mean, it was awful. It was painful. Painful. 
playing for the national championship and playing so badly, looked like a high school team. But then the second half. So he didn't go nuts, he said. As he was watching, even though it was tough to watch, there was always in the back of his mind, he can't wait till this turns around, because I know it will. And then the second half came, and boy, he was in heaven. Everything he did was right. And again, as I say, at the end of the game, they pulled it out, and they became number one team in the nation. He was thrilled. And that really is where we're at with the pandemic. The hope is that when this is all said and done, we need to know that it's God's world and everything will be great. Everything will be better. We will be, medicine will be better. Business, learning how to work from home. Hopefully politics. Religion, people turning to God more. Talking, listening. Family, interpersonal relationships. You know, life is a journey. Our itinerary has already been decided. We are traveling towards our destiny, whether we know it or not. The true test, the real essence in life is to know that no matter what today looks like, there is a rainbow at the end of the storm. What that means is we need to see beauty even in the majesty of the darkest clouds and the flash of lightning and the sound of thunder and the roar of the wind. We need to find a warm, safe, and secure place to wait the storm out as a spectator, not a combatant. We need to choose life, a life worth living, a life that brings peace and joy between ourselves and between God Almighty. You know, we need to reach out to other travelers, opening the door for them and sharing the refuge. Somehow, the more people, the more warmth, the more joy, and also the more laughter. A lively song here while others dance there, glasses kiss, men hug, and the air is broken with the sounds of L'chaim, to life, to life. The more we give, the richer we become. But where is this refuge? Who owns it? How do we all find it just before the storm is about to unleash your fury? When we look around us, what we see is we are not the masters of our own destinies. God is speaking. He has always been speaking, telling us, warning us that we need to do better. We need to accept our mission as partners with God in his world. How is it possible that we who live in an era of such affluence at the same time, we can also live in an era of such chaos. You know, back in the 60s, the mantra was make love, not war. Somehow today has become make war, not love. Think of all the little things we used to do, and now they no longer exist. Shaking hands, hugging, kissing, even children and grandchildren. Restrictions on going to affairs, sporting events, concerts, restaurants, bars, houses of worship, it goes on. Has all our joy been taken away? I think not. When you go on vacation, I don't care where or how exotic the location is, your destination. All places become old quickly. What makes a great vacation is being there with great people. Even a pandemic can't take that joy away. Stay connected. It's about people. Now, one way or another, this too will end. The real question will be, what will we take away from this moment in time? What have we learned? For one, air is really important. But so are our personal relationships. God has forced us to go back to basics, our families. Everything begins and ends with family. I'm sure that many families and many relationships have been tested, but maybe that has been for the best. If you want steel to be harder, what you do is you raise the temperature. Well, the temperature has been raised on all our relationships during this pandemic. Some have failed. But in reality, they were doomed even before the pandemic. Others, I believe the majority, have been strengthened. 
and will benefit from this experience. We need to know, as the saying goes in Ivrit, Gam Zulatova, everything that happens is for the best. Certain challenges in life may be bitter, but in the end, it will make us all better. You know, gratitude in Hebrew is called Hakorasatov, a recognition of good. We have all seen our lives challenged by circumstances beyond our control. This pandemic has really been a wake-up call. We all need to recognize all the blessings that we had before and make sure that we thank God our Father for all the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. God, like any parent, wants to be appreciated. Think of it. How often do we actually say thank you to our parents for all that they do and all have done and all they have done for us? Do we thank them for all their concerns and all their worries about our lives? You know, it makes no difference whether you're old or young. As my mother would always say, little children, little problems, big children, big problems. Parents always remain parents. They truly care. Well, guess what? So does God. If you are fortunate enough to still have parents that are alive, call them, text them. Let them know you're thinking about them and that you do really appreciate all that they have done and do for you, for their concerns. Make it a daily or at least a weekly event. Make sure that your children know what you are doing. It may pay off with big rewards in the future. Who wouldn't want to know that the one thing in the world that they love more than anything else is thinking about them? You know, we should view our relationship with God much the same way. We need to connect with Him on a daily basis. I'm not talking about prayer, not just prayer. Take a minute each day and have a conversation with God. He is listening. Talk to Him. Open up your heart and your mind to him. Share your greatest joys and fears with him. He is a great listener. Put your faith in God and you will never fail. Guess what? The call is free and the benefits are priceless. That doesn't mean that there will be not be any more challenges in life. It just means that you don't have to face those challenges alone. He is there to help you on your journey. Now, whether your life is a joy or a disaster, in reality, the choice is up to you. Choose life. Choose happiness. Choose the path that allows you to find peace and contentment. In all your relationships, especially with God Almighty and all of his creations. And with that, may we usher in the coming of Mashiach Sikana quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for listening. Again, if you have any topics that you would like to hear about, please uh, give me a text at these at the base Mordechai, base dash Mordechai dot com, or on my email account. Again, thank you very much for coming. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Stay what warm in this weather. God should bless you and your family only with good. Thank you. Shabbat shalom.